Harry with Stamps and Lingers, and it is a one o'clock. Nope. Yep. One o'clock on Thursday, which means it's time for a YouTube video. And I've got a fun little fun fold for you that hopefully I can make and not look like a complete dweeb doing it. So let me just go ahead and uh, refresh over here to be sure that I am out on the interwebs. All right. Hey, Bree. See you joining. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right. So this is my card for today. It is uh, variously called a box card. And I actually watched the video that Don Griffith did to get kind of the basic idea for the base itself. And then I went from there and decorated it on my own. So I have used the Seascape stamp set and the bundled Sea Life and highly gorgeous uh, die set. You can see it has four dies in it, two very large ones, a... Uh, sea horse and a fish that to me looks like a bed of fish which I wouldn't put in the ocean but you know what I saw a lot of things when we were in Maui and so you just never know what might be there hey Rosie appreciate you joining and of course it's got a little school of fish and some coral and then the matching seascape has a couple of three sentiments and some more images and I've used them all and I also used what is one of my new favorite um dies for sentiment labels, the Hippo and Friends. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, uh, I've made this exactly twice. The first time was a total fail. So hopefully I won't make another total fail here today. All right. All of the card cuts will be on my blog tomorrow. So you don't need to worry about that. We're going to start with my Simply Scored tool. And I have a piece of Mango Melody for my card base. And you're going to want it to be eight and a half wide by 10 inches long <clears throat> and then you're going to do a little bit of scoring with your score tool that comes with the simply scored and you're going to want to score first at two inches then at three and a half inches then again at six and a half inches and finally at at eight inches okay Okay, then we're going to just turn it 90 degrees like so. Hi, Karen. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Danette. I appreciate that. Aw, Cynthia, that's sweet. That's very nice. Well, hopefully you'll still be happy with what I do if I bork this up and have to start over. Okay, so I've turned it 90 degrees, so I have the short side across the top, and I am just going to score at one and a half inches and again at seven inches. Okay, so you can see I've created kind of a grid here. And now I'm going to put my score tool away because I do not need it anymore. Not no more. I don't need it no more, no more, no more, no more. Okay, <clears throat> now you can see I have four rectangles here in the corner. And we're going to cut those completely out. And then we're going to cut along this score line right here. So basically what I'm going to do to make that easy is I'm going to just cut up this score line all the way. I'm going to pass the first score and go to the second score line. Okay. But when you get to this point, you're going to want to cut off at the first score line. Okay. We're going to actually cut that again, but it'll be easier to do it in two steps. Okay. So we're just going to cut past the score line all the way to the second score line. And then we're going to cut at the first score line. And then repeat. And if I was a really good editor of videos, which I'm not, then I would be speeding this up right now so that you didn't have to watch it. But I don't, so you have to. Okay, okay. Sade, sade, here we go. Well, if you've been following the Matted Finn saga, we were less than successful yesterday. He's very shiny, he's very clean, he's very silky and smooth, but it's all just frosting. The cake underneath is still matted and tangled, so we have some work to do. Hey Amy, hi Kim, appreciate you joining. Okay, now we have reached the point where we are going to start taking a look at, now depending on whose video you watch, every people do different things. Um, some folks want to do all the scoring and or all the folding and burnishing now, but I am not going to. I'm just going to go this part first off. So the first thing I want to do here 
is, let me show you why this is fun. You know, it occurred to me, I just showed you this. Let me show you what this is actually doing. Cause duh, this is a belly band. Looks a lot like a gate card, but when you open it, it is actually a box fold, okay? So what we're doing now is we're creating this fold piece right here, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is use your ruler or whatever and just go from this score line to this score line should be three inches, and it is. Whew. Then you just wanna make a mark at one and a half inches. Then turn it around, get rid of your belly band, and do the same on the other side, okay? So is this the easiest fun fold on the planet? No. Is it the hardest? Way no. So here comes the hardest part of this whole thing, and that is making sure that you use the light blade and not the dark blade, because the light blade scores and the dark blade cuts, and you don't want to cut right now. Just saying. Okay. In order to do this, I find it helpful to lay this panel over just so that it's out of the way and you can see that corner very easily. What you're gonna do is you're going to put that little pencil mark that you made right in the little trough here, this little trough. And then you're gonna rotate the card until this corner is in the little trough at the bottom. Okay, just like that. Really all we're doing, in case you're wondering, is we're making a score line along that diagonal so that we can make that do its foldy thing. Okay, and then, yeah, it's amazing. We're gonna do that a few more times, like three more times. Okay, so I've just rotated it because I don't wanna unfold again. Okay, score, little tick mark in the uh, cutting channel and then this corner in the cutting channel. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a little score right there like that. Then we'll unfold it and repeat for the other side, okay? Pretend I'm speeding it up and you don't have to watch this cement drying. This is what we call how to make the sausage, okay? Michelle, hello, I appreciate you joining from San Diego. I bet it is sunny and beautiful. All right, let's see, where do I not have a, a score? Oh, okay, right here. I got. I don't have one right here. But you know what? I need to make that one a little better. Little better, little more better. I didn't get it quite scored enough. And you do want it scored enough that when you go to make that little triangle bend, it'll, it'll do its thing, okay? All right, and then we'll go right here. So that should have been all organized and, you know, one right after the other, but, you know, do what you got to do. Basically, what you want to end up with is a diagonal and a diagonal, and then a diagonal and a diagonal. And I'm going to increase that one just a little bit, too, because I, I got a little bit, I got a little bit jiggy with it and did not make that score like it should have. Take your time on these so that you get it right, because the, the better you score, the easier it's going to be to fold. Okay, so now we're ready to start kind of putting it together. And so what I did next is I started making these folds so that I could see how things were going to go. Okay. And you're kind of making your adjustments here. Remember it's paper, guys. It doesn't always do exactly what you tell it to do, so try to make it do your thing. Hey, Debbie, appreciate you joining. I bet you you do have nice weather. All right. And then we're going to just fold like so. Okay. So when you get done, this is kind of how it looks. But we have more yet to do, so... I'm making this do what I want it to do up here, a little bit, okay? And you can give that a little burnish like so. Now, to put this together, we're gonna use a little bit of tear and tape. So what I wanna do first, is I'm gonna flip it, so this is now the inside, I'm gonna flip it so that the outside is up, and I'm gonna put tear and tape on these flaps right here. Can you use liquid glue? Sure, but do you have to wait a little longer? Yes. So I like to use the tear and tape and I put it on before I cut, okay? Because that way, when you get ready to cut, 
it's a whole lot easier. You can cut it easy and then your tape is on all the way to the ends of where you're cutting. It's a little harder to organize it when you are trying to put it on little, di in little angles and stuff, okay? So in case you're wondering if you've ever used tear and tape, it's a whole lot, this is hard, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that is a hard way to hold tear and tape and work. Stick your hand through the tape and rotate it so that you can hold between your thumb and forefinger and then you can guide it and it rolls right off your hand, okay? Uh, so we're gonna do repeat that again and repeat that again and look I said it was easier I didn't say it was always easy because sometimes the tear and tape is really sticking to your fingers but I promise you it's easier than the other way okay so that's that now what I'm gonna do, and I'm really doing it just to reduce bulk, okay? So I'm where I've done my tear and tape, I'm gonna cut that flap in about half, and then I'm going to make a diagonal across like that to make it into a tab. But you see, by putting the tear and tape on ahead, I've already got my tear and tape right against my edges there versus trying to put it on and then trim it off afterwards. So. You know, you can do it however works for you, but I have found that that is the easiest way. And then we'll just go across like that. If you make a lot of boxes, that's a pretty handy tip. If you put your tear and tape on before you start cutting and folding all your tabs, you'll be much happier. I promise. Okay. And then one more. <clears throat> and make your diagonal cuts. You can see, it really doesn't matter how big or deep the diagonal cut is, you're just taking off some bulk, okay? That's really all you're doing there, taking off some bulk. Thanks, Deborah. All right, Karen. Okay, so guys, I'm talking a little more than I should, so I'm going to go ahead and have a little drink. Just Diet Mountain Dew. Okay, now I'll go ahead and do some burnishing before I get ready to put it together. Now this is an opposite fold. Okay. Now, on my very first one that was a fail, I uh, assembled my box and then I tried to put my inner liner inside in. And I can assure you that that was more than my fat fingers could handle. So I highly recommend that you stop at this point and make your inside, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I have used um, some of the Beauty of the Earth DSP, but I'm not using the earth side, I'm using the water side. And I've got some Granny Apple Green mats. We'll put that over there. And this is my inner liner. That's what I'm calling it, is my inner liner. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use one of the um, sentiments from my stamp set, the Seascape stamp set, and I'm going to stamp it in Knight of Navy on this. Yes, Deborah, the tear and tape is great stuff, and it's really good when you're making 3D cards and or cards that are gonna be played with a lot. So I think this will be a card that'll be played with a lot and it'll do much better on with the tear and tape. Remember my tip when you're using one of the clear that isn't actually clear, it's red rubber, one of the clear stamps, go ahead and do a pre-test so that you can make sure that it's lining up the way you think because the straightness of your sentiment is directly related to one, how well you put that sticker on, and two, how good a job they did engraving the sentiment or the image in the first place, okay? So if they did it crookedy, it's better to know that ahead of time. Now it is pretty straight, so I'm going to put it right here, like so. It's a little crooked, but it's all right. I can live with that. Can't y'all live with that, I think. Hi, right, Karen, I appreciate you joining. Late or no, I'm happy to have you. Then I'm gonna take some Granny Apple Green and I'm going to stamp the coral that in another world could be a tree. But I'm gonna stamp it down here in the corner, like so. 
This is one of those cards that doesn't have a lot of space to write anything on, but there is room inside it. You could write on another piece of cardstock or just a piece of um, stationery and place it on the inside. All right. <clears throat> now, I think it probably wants a couple of fishes. And these are Calypso coral fishes. And they're doing their school thing, so they're just kind of going across like that. And then I'm going to give them some Misty Moonlight bubbles. Some bubbles. Some bubbles. I love the bubbles. I, actually, this is one of my favorite little images in here. And then I'm going to put this right there, like so. I mean, it really kind of amazingly makes it look like water, right? Sure, Mare. Just smile and nod, y'all. I can, Oh, whoa! Did you see that? That went crazy. What's remarkable is that there's not ink all over every piece of cardstock I own. Yeah, okay. So let's get that gone. And then I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue to adhere this to my granny apple green mat. I am glad you got a, week, a day off, a Thursday off, Karen. That is always fun. And I'm so glad you decided to spend part of it with me. That is nice. All right. So we're going to just put this on. Try to make it sort of straight, Mary. I mean, come on. Sort of straight. The first four times I made this, I'm not kidding. I, I messed it up so many times. Okay. Now we're just going to put it in here, making sure we're putting it on the, you know, inside. And then we can assemble our box. Then we'll make the front and be done. Oops. Now there is no right side up or wrong side down, but... I decided I wanted to make it look right to me. So we're just putting that in the center. And it's so much easier to get everything lined up if you do it before you assemble the card. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just lay this down like so. And this is going to fold in to adhere there. And then this is going to fold in to adhere there like that. Do a little fit check. Make it do what you need it to do. Okay. It's a little bit less straight than I would like. So I'm going to help it be a little bit more straighter. A little bit more straighter. You know, that's the thing about a gate card. Is you want it to be straight as best you can. Now, you obviously could do this without a belly band, but I like a belly band on a gate card just because that's what helps to keep it together better. Okay, so what we're going to do here is fold the top and the bottom in. And I'm going to pull the tear and tape on this, the top and the bottom on the right side. Maybe. Well, I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay it all down after I get the tear and tape off because it's going to be perverse because, you know, why not? And yes, I could probably dig out my take a pick tool, but it's momentarily escaped. I don't know where it is at this instant in time. Hey, Anne. Oh, it's a fun card. Yes, this is a box card. So I got the top, the tear and tape off the top. Uh, if you use liquid glue here, you would just put some liquid glue on the tab and then pull this up like so and hold it in place until it until it got adhered, adhered, till the liquid glue dried enough to hold it, okay? I kind of like the, uh... okay, there we go. So we got that. I'm going to lay that down like so. And then I'm just going to tip that over. And tip it over on the bottom and give it a little press. Okay, and then we'll repeat on the other side. Never fear, everybody. I will get this card done and it will still only be Thursday. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to be this Thursday. I'm not going to say it's going to be Thursday the 10th of June, but it will be a Thursday when I get this done. I promise. All right. So there's that side. Northern Ireland. Anne, I just realized what you'd written. I'm a little envious. Ireland is on totally on my bucket list. I need to get there. 
before I die. I just have to figure out how to make that happen. Come on, Stampin' Up! Let's have an incentive trip to Ireland. Yes, let's do it. Or how about a European cruise around Europe where Ireland is part of the itinerary? Okay, now I'm just going to tip this down across the top like that and make sure this end is straight and there we go. Okay, and it is relatively straight. Probably could have been a little perfecter, but you know, it is what it is. It's paper, and sometimes paper has its own brain. But basically, there you go. You've got you a box card. All right, so let's go ahead and decorate the front. I've got two more pieces of the Beauty of the Earth on the oceany side. And I cut them right one after the other so that they fit together like so. Do you see that? You could also make this piece like this, do your stamping that I'm fixing to do, and then cut it. But I prefer to make everything as difficult as possible, and so I cut it ahead of time. Okay, don't be like me. Just, yes, Amy, let's go. Let's go. I've never been there, so it wouldn't even be back for me. I want to go at least one time before I die. Maybe I should live there. I don't know. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am just going to make a little scene on this front that is going to sort of come together, and it'll be separated, but everybody will be able to tell that it is of one, of one. It is of a whole, like that. Okay, so I've got my granny apple green coral. And then I'm going to stamp some more fishes. Some more fishes here and there. And I'm going to turn these over. Now, if you think these look like weird fish, I can assure you, yes, they are kind of weird fish. But I saw, as recently as a couple of weeks ago, or last week, some really oddly shaped fish. I'm just saying. So... I don't think you need to go, oh, those fish are upside down. Trust me, I saw some darn fish that looked upside down. Swimming around in the ocean, right there in Molokini. They looked like they were upside down. We even have sunshine. The rain does keep it green. I'm certain it does. I am certain it does, and I'm betting it's beautiful. All right, I've got some more misty moonlight bubbles that I'm putting here and there. Is there any rhyme? Is there any reason? Of course not. Why would you have rhyme or reason? Like that. Okay. And I think that's pretty much all I did there. And so we'll close this up and get it onto the front. Got to kiss the Blarney Stone. Nice. <clears throat> I'm pretty certain I would fall on my Blarney Stone, is what I would do if I tried that. All right. So let's go ahead and mat these on their pieces of Granny Apple Green. And then we'll put them on the front of the card. And then we'll assemble our belly band. Okay. Like so. So obviously the point of this particular tutorial <clears throat> is to teach you how to make a box card. How you decorate it, then you can do as you like. I've seen many, many wonderful... Uh, um, cards made with it with all sorts of different beautiful decorations. Your box card is your cake and how you decorate it is your frosting. Chocolate cake is chocolate cake but what goes on it is what matters. And then we'll put the other piece on. Like so. On the other side. <clears throat> and you can kind of see when the card is closed that those two designs, if I was doing a, bit, a much better job of lining that up, much better job of lining that up would be quite obviously the same scene divided in half. Right? Okay. 
<clears throat> now I have a 5 8 inch wide piece of granny apple green and I'm gonna do a really technical job of measuring it I'm just gonna wrap it it's like 11 and a half inches long just so that I have all the room in the world if you've only got a 10 inch piece use it it'll work because you're gonna cut it off just wrap it kind of loosely around the front like that you don't you want the card to be a little bit open when you're not holding pressure on it, okay? If you really crank it down, you will never get the belly band back on and off, I promise. So I cut the excess so you can see you can use a little extra or a little more if you want. And we'll use a little liquid glue. Would a gift certificate fit in the box? A gift card, absolutely. It absolutely would fit in the box, Faith. Excellent idea. Excellent idea. So I'm just holding that down so that the liquid glue dries. But again, I, I haven't cranked it, okay? You can see it's really pretty loose because I need to be able to put the belly band on and off. I mean, you don't need to, but it's kind of hoser, right? If you, if you give a card to somebody and they just can't get the belly band on and off and so they can't even play with it. Okay, now I've done a little cutting and I made a seahorse, so the seahorse <clears throat> and this coral are made with the rainbow glimmer paper. And then I cut another coral out of the ombre paper, ombre specialty paper in Mango Melody. Okay, and I'm really just going to line these up. You can see what I'm aiming at. So I'm going to have this guy be on here. And then I'm going to tuck my little seahorse in and amongst the coral because that's where he'd be. I'm pretty certain of it. <clears throat> and then this guy is going to go like that. So we're just going to create a little montage, a little seaside montage. So I'll use a little liquid glue on the back of this die cut. And let it adhere like that. And then I'm gonna put, I'm just putting liquid glue right in the centers because I don't want it on the card front. I just want the liquid glue on my belly band, right? Because you know, if you glue it to the card front, it's kind of a, defeats the purpose, right? <clears throat> All right, so this is just kind of gonna go across the middle of this coral. And then you can just kind of give it a little hold like that until it adheres. Now, if any of you are remembering our old glimmer paper, the glitter paper that you could not glue to to save your life, this is not that. The new glimmer paper um, formulation is much more glue friendly. Okay, <clears throat> now for a sentiment after a small drink. Yes. That does make it even better, doesn't it, Faith? All right, so I have yet another piece of the Beauty of the Earth. And in Night of Navy, I'm going to stamp the second sentiment, which is, in this case, thank you. Like that. We'll add some bubbles. And then I'm going to cut it. What I'm doing is I've got my Misty Moonlight and I'm just adding some bubbles next to the sentiment like this. And then when I cut it out, some of those bubbles, well, a lot of those bubbles will go away, but a lot of those bubbles will stay. So I'm using the smallest of the little, oh, these are probably hexagons, sort of, in Hippo and Friends. And I'll cut this out. I'll be right back. totally moved so I got to redo that that did not come out at all like I planned not even sort of so hang on just a minute hang on just a minute this is why you keep scraps handy right this is why you keep scraps handy 
No glitter shedding. Yes, exactly correct. Nothing is all over you. Unlike the old paper formulation, which put it everywhere. You could always tell when someone had been playing with their glitter paper. It was crazy. So in case you're not tracking along, I really borked up my cart, my sentiment cut. To be honest, this is why I usually do this before, so that when I make a mistake, you don't see it. And you go away thinking, my goodness, that Mary, she's perfect in every way. But now you know the ugly truth. I am not perfect in any way, let alone every way. So let's see if I can make this one work right. Let's see if I can. What do y'all think? What are the odds? Anybody want to put odds on it? No? Okay. It's probably good because there's no telling whether it'll come out straight or not. I think that one did it. I think it did. I think it did. I think I can. I think I can. It did. It did. Okay. Phew. What a relief. All right. Now, on this one, I'm just going to... I popped the other one up on, on dimensionals, but I don't think that's necessarily what you want to do. Yes, the hippo dies. Yes, exactly. You need them. Truth in advertising, I don't have the the stamp set. I don't think I have the stamp set that goes with it. I might have the stamp set. I might have done that because I buy everything together. Nope, I didn't. This is one of those ones that I didn't do. Mm -mm. I just bought the dies because I don't have a particular need for the, scent, the things in the stamp set, but I did love the dies. Okay, so I've just put some liquid glue on there, and I'm going to let it adhere for a few seconds. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and take some Artistry Bloom sequins, the little bluish ones, that look like, you know, bubbles. And I'm going to adhere them here and there. On my card front. Like that. Just for a little bling, little bling. No such thing as too much bling. I mean, some people would disagree. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gotta have another one. And we'll put another one over here. Seven. But now it doesn't look even, so now I'm gonna put two more over here. Eight and nine. Okay, and then I'll slide this off just to prove to you that it will slide off because, you know, that's what I like to do is to prove that I haven't borked it. She says as she hopes to get it off of the card. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and just stick one of these little doohickeys right inside on my inner liner. Okay. All right. So there's our card. I'll finish up with a envelope because you got to have an envelope and it does fit in an envelope. Therefore, I have to prove that it does. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp a little coral, some fishes, some bubbles, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. By which I mean, you'll be ready to get back to the rest of your day. And we can drive on and get through this week. Can you even believe the week is almost over? My goodness, the days and the weeks, they do fly by. Okay, a couple of Calypso coral schools of fish and you know they really do fly around in the air in the sea like that i mean it's crazy they do this it's they like that yeah. and there they are they're out in their fish thing and they go there i was yeah, it's, that's an old pilot joke sorry and a few more bubbles like that now, for my DSP that's going to go on the back, on the envelope flap, what I did is I put some bubbles on it before I got it adhered. Because that way I'm not worrying about getting it on the envelope. Okay, like that. And here we go. And away we go. 
that was me channeling Jackie Gleason. How many of you are old enough to remember watching Jackie Gleason? My grandparents, we watched it all the time. If Jackie was on, we were watching. Also Lawrence Welk. A one and a two and a one, two, three. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. And then we'll give that a quick trim. And be done scare. We'll be done scare. Okie doke. There it is. Right to there, you got it. And this will actually go back on. Now I'm I'm really hanging it out here, you guys, to show you that it goes back on, but it does. Whew. What a relief. What a relief. And there you go. I hope you have enjoyed the box card and that you will try one because it's really pretty easy. So watch for the video replay tomorrow and all of the card cuts and information on what you need to make it. And I hope I will see you on Saturday for my Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. Y'all have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much. See ya.